I think what made me realize the show was a hit was, uh, it, literally a hit, was the day after it hit the airwaves, the day after it was released on Netflix, literally less than 24 hours. I was on the subway, on the J train of all trains, the ghetto of ghetto trains, um, and some guy was staring at me and I thought, oh, somebody's gonna pick a fight with me. You know, it's like New York subway. I get very used to people saying obnoxious things to me and I say obnoxious things back, whatever. But this guy was looking at me and I thought, you know, he's gonna, he's gonna come at me. Gird your loins, Leah, get ready. And he looked right at me and he went, big boo! And I thought, are you kidding me? It hasn't even been 24 hours? Oh my God. The first screwdriver I was asked to sign was a week after the show had hit the air. I was walking down the Knickerbocker, because I live in, in, uh, in Bushwick, past the Ace Hardware, and some girl came running out of the Ace Hardware, screaming, Big Boo, Big Boo, I, I saw you yesterday. I hope I would see you again today. Would you sign my screwdriver? I couldn't believe it. She worked at the Ace Hardware. It was like hilarious. So yeah, that's the strangest. I mean, not counting the body parts I get, I would say the screwdriver is probably the strangest thing I've had to sign. You never ever see a positive image of transgenders uh, in, in American film or television. Um, it's really exciting to see that happen with Laverne. You know, as a part of the LGBTQ community, you know, I feel I can say that out loud, proud, we've, we're doing something with our show that you just don't see with that right and on the same then the same platform me um you know i spent my whole life i mean i've been a stand-up comic for a very long time this is 30 years in show business doing this thing and my entire career has been about uh, don't judge a book by its cover basically when you look at me you don't realize that the many myriad of things that i can do in show business and i try to put a positive spin on being a butch dyke and that is something you never see again on american television you just don't all butches are portrayed as stupid they're all portrayed as uh, you know truck drivers uh that they don't know they're not they're impolite they don't speak well all of that but here's boo who is the biggest baddest butches dyke in in the prison and she's also the smartest person in the room. What's really interesting is as, as and to me it's really interesting in a show business way, um, as a comedian, I'm all, I often have to make a script funny. I mean, I can't even tell you how many times I've been handed a piece of trash, garbage that ends up making it on the air and you don't know how it happens and you have to make it funny. I'm finally handed scripts where I don't have to make them funny. They are funny. So it's just, a, it's like a little icing on that cake um, every now and then if I throw in a little line that everybody thinks is funny. It's great. When I worked with Jodie Foster, which was really fun, I only had one line in that episode, but Jodie came up to me and said, you're really funny, which uh, of course I immediately tweeted and put on Instagram and yelled from the highest mountain top, Jodie Foster thinks I'm funny. I think it would be really too intense, uh, personally, if we were in a maximum security prison, if it was like Oz and you know, just think, you know what, watch lockup. You wanna see that watch lockup. But for us, I think uh, we are able to say a lot more with what we're doing because of the common comedic element that's in the show. Boo shows herself not in a very good light in this situation. I'm, I was, it was interesting to see, um, for me as an actor, it was really interesting to see how the writers turned Boo a little bit and showed a darker side of her that we hadn't seen in the previous, in the, uh, you know, previous season. Um, the comedy is still there and everything, but you hear, you, you get that, um, like, Boo is mad at Red. She's mad at Red because uh, Red kind of treats Boo like her poor stepchild. Big Boo is me. Do, am I channeling a little of myself into Big, big Boo is me? They've, you know, uh, I have the luxury of I guess, you know, Genji's talked about this openly. Uh, big Boo was not originally going to be a big part of the show, and they, they liked me, so they just kept writing for her. So it's my voice constantly that they're writing in. I mean, that's why it's so easy for me to memorize my lines. It's like, I would have I said that in a second, you know? And uh, so, yeah, I am Big Boo.